Hello everyone, this is Ray Space, and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.12. During a recent Twitch livestream, I decided to finally tackle extraplanetary launch pads. It's been a long time coming. I constantly put it into installs, especially when there's USI or other base building stuff, but I never got around to using it, partly because there are no Realism Overhaul configurations for extraplanetary launch pads, so of course, I had to make them. So this entailed scaling the stuff up to more realism overhaul sizes. Uh, normally that is scaling up by a factor of 1.6 and then getting rid of reaction wheels, changing the fuels from liquid fuel oxidizer to other things. I think there was only one part that actually had fuels and that was the actual launch pad as we'll soon see. The launch pad also had crew capacity because we need engineers in order to manage it. So food, water and oxygen had to be introduced and so yeah, many changes have to be made. There are actually many parts, but this is the core part. This is the launch pad. And so I wanted to cheat it over to the moon and see if it works. Uh, it wouldn't be able to land all on its own. It's got two little thrusters and those tanks that you see there. And we see that because I scaled it up and increased its mass, it's now 30.9 tons dry and then with fuel about 34 tons it gets in its folded form about 300 meters per second so just enough to do the final bit of landing and that's it there's also this construction workshop it doesn't look particularly good and i decide to make it lighter here it's 60 ish tons uh we can't have that but yeah uh, that that didn't look particularly good the goal of that is to produce the rocket parts and it takes metal metals and then produces rocket parts. Before that step, we need the smelter to take in metallic ore and produce metals. Now, originally it wasn't metallic ore. The original extraplanetary launch pad configuration had other resources, but we don't want it to use those other resources because those aren't in community resource pack. So I changed it to community resource pack resources, metallic ore, metals, and rocket parts. Uh, rocket parts it was already using, but gosh, the parts need an update. Extraplanetary launch pads is a very old mod, and I think I'm gonna make new models for the smelter, which is the one at the bottom, and the construction workshop, which is the one at the top. So that's more work for me. Uh, but if you have USI, it already changes certain things about extraplanetary launch pads, but since I didn't want to like require USI for compatibility with Realism Overhaul, I decided that I would make the configurations based on not having USI, and maybe it would be better just to remove the USI configurations that change extraplanetary launch pads so that's simpler. One reason to do that is because USI is thinking about the stock system, with really small planets and it's asking you to gather resources from all over the place, all sorts of different resources in order to construct your rocket. As far as feasibility is concerned, that's not so easy with real solar system, right? Uh, so we, we want a trimmer tech tree, we want fewer resources necessary to do these things, otherwise it's just a lot easier to send a new vehicle out from Earth. Right, if it takes you too long, and the thrusters here weren't powerful enough to slow me down enough uh, to land there. I needed to start from a greater height, really. But there we go, we had a little bit of a hop. As I tried to set down, the plumes on the thrusters are a little bit off. That depends on where the thrust transform for those are. And they weren't in the right place. But anyway, I managed to set it down, so there we go. But the point is that I just wanted a simple flow, so we go from metallic ore to metals to rocket parts, and then that's simple. I decided that this model is okay. I, I especially like the way it folds out like that. That's very convenient. It'll be very difficult to uh, do anything better like that. This is what the UI looks like for extraplanetary launch pads, and we select a craft like this. It gives you uh, the craft that you have in VAB or SPH or such or even a sub-assembly, but I needed a new craft and one that preferably used the same fuel that I put in the launch pad so I don't have to hook up another fuel tank. And so MMH and MON3 it was, that's what I put in the launch pad for its own landing fuel. It still had some left so that I could fuel this. 
and as long as I kept the probe small, I figured that it would be able to do that and it wouldn't take too many rocket parts to build it either. You'll note that it's a 0.658 ton craft, but its dry mass is 0.188 tons. And for a dry mass of 0.188 tons, when I load it up here, you'll see how much, how many rocket parts it needs to build that. So we'll have that reference. And okay, load takes a little bit. Okay, a little bit. All right, there we go. Uh, 68.26. So it's about one rocket part for every three kilograms. Uh, I hope that that ends up conserving mass. But uh, I did not have any productivity there, so I couldn't actually build it. And the reason I didn't have any productivity is the Kerbals weren't engineers. So you actually have to have engineers inside in order for the construction to work out. Pilots are not good enough, nor are scientists. So I sent another one with engineers, this time starting from a greater height. There was a flawed landing as well, so I'll just mention that. But yeah, there it is. And now we can show you why and get the probe built. So I don't know if uh, people think that the full USI sort of way of going about things for extraplanetary launch pads is better, but um, for now, my supposition is that in real solar system that would be too tedious and then people would just skip the whole business of trying to um, build it in C2 and instead just launch it from Earth because otherwise it'll take too much time to gather all the stuff. And so I've kept it simple and in order to use this with USI then you should get rid of the USI configurations in the patch manager folder is what it is patch manager folder but I'm not releasing this just yet because there's a lot of other work to do including the additional models for the construction workshop and the smelter and I have to test out that those work so we produce the little probe that's good and here I'm trying to figure out, it doesn't have the MMH and Mon 3 right now and I just wanted to make sure that it would actually load it when I release it or I didn't want to release it with it all empty but when I clicked release it did in fact fuel it and so there it is, it drops from that height. We may have to worry about that, I'm not sure. And that's its size compared to the landing pad so we can get something larger, uh, perhaps a normal lunar lander sized vehicle or a little supply vehicle. If we were trying to ship back some rare resources, which is really what I want to see happen, like if we mine rare metals on the moon or something like that, then we can ship it up. Those are things I want to have, you know, trucked into the launch pad on the moon. Not the stuff to construct the vehicle, but rare resources that we would send back to Earth. That's the kind of uh, role play that I'm looking for. So next up, I wanted to see about these survey stakes. And what the survey stakes are supposed to do is let you make a larger launch pad uh, as opposed to the set one that we have right there, right? It has a limited size. What if we wanted something larger? We could just sort of survey that area out and launch from there is the theory. And so we pack some survey stakes and a mallet. And I was trying to see how this works, but I have not been successful yet. And it turns out surveying requires pilots, so they changed that up on me. Uh, so pilots are the ones who do the surveying or use the EL survey station, which looks just like the hitchhiker storage container, in order to survey things. Anybody can stick the stakes in, but as far as actually conducting the survey, apparently it takes a pilot. And the survey stakes have to have specified axes and stuff like that. It's, it's a bit complicated, so I'm still working through that and figuring out how that works and then I also have to figure out how the smelter and the construction workshop work to make sure that that whole workflow is correct so that we go from drilling for resources, uh, producing the rocket parts, producing the actual rocket vehicles, and going all the way through like that. For now, I only use the rocket parts that I sent this over with which is 
nice and all, but it doesn't allow for very large vehicles to be constructed in C2 using the stuff that we can get from the moon. Unfortunately, this thing doesn't have a really good hatch on it. Uh, it took me a while to figure out where the hatch was, and it doesn't really have a ladder all the way up to it. The hatch is is here, and that's that's where the Kerbals are to control the launch pad. They are the engineers in there to build your craft. It seems a little bit precarious, but you know, there we are. So this was my first ever attempt to actually use explanatory launch pads and configure it for realism overhaul. It's been a long time where I've kept putting it into installs but never using it and hopefully it'll become part of the flow in my upcoming adventures and maybe the upcoming adventures of other people once I release the configuration and the updated parts once I get down to that. So anyway, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.